I think one of the toughest things about kind of learning PowerShell, especially if you're using blog posts or something else, is is really dealing with the fact that PowerShell allows us to be pretty shorthanded and sloppy when we type commands. In other words, I can type something like dir star dash star minus r minus ex star dot exe, uh, and you know, frankly, that's a little bit hard to interpret. So let's kind of break this down. I'm going to leave this window open, scroll back up to the top, make it a little smaller, and open a new copy of PowerShell. Kind of bring it down here a little bit, and run help dir. So let's see what's going on here. Now the first parameter I've provided is star dot star. Now you can see here that the first parameter listed is dash path, and because the parameter name itself is in square brackets, I know that the parameter name is optional. I don't have to type the parameter name. Instead, I can just put a string into the first position, and that's what I've done. So star dot star is being interpreted as the path for this command. Now, the next thing I have is dash r. So coming down here, I'm looking for a parameter that starts with an r, and here it is. There's no special way that PowerShell has dash r defined as a shortcut. It's simply when I typed dash r, PowerShell said, okay, well, let's see if there's a commandlet that starts, or a parameter that starts with r, and there is. And there's only one. And because there's only one parameter that starts with r, dash r is all I needed to type. Now, the next thing I have is dash ex, and I've put star dot exe. So, again, this is parameter abbreviation in action. Uh, let's see, pf. Uh, dash ex. So it looks like that's the exclude parameter, and I'm providing a string that's going to exclude star dot exe from my results. And it looks like there isn't any other parameter that starts with e, so I, I probably could have typed dash e. Where I have to be a little careful, though, is on these common parameters. Now there are two common parameters that also start with the letter e, uh, error action and error variable. Because they start with E, I can't simply type dash E to represent exclude. If I were to just type dash E, PowerShell would tell me that it, it can't unambiguously resolve that. It doesn't know if I mean exclude, error action, or error variable. So I typed dash EX, which is probably the minimum PowerShell would need to uniquely distinguish that particular parameter. Now, one of the ways you can really get a better look at all this is to type minus full after your help command. And when you get down, you'll see that, well, here's the dash exclude parameter. Um, it is not required, so I could have run the command without it. And, um, and uh, I, I see that it doesn't need to go in a particular position. If I want to use this one, it's got to have its name, or at least a portion of the name typed. And if we get down to dash path, you'll see the difference. Um, it's not required. I, I could run dir without a path. Uh, but if I do choose to use it, I don't have to type the name. I simply have to provide its value in the first position. I can type the name. It's completely legal to go ahead and do that. Uh, in fact, if I were to come up here, it would be just as legal for me to type something like dash PA. Now, as a best practice, especially as you're getting started, try not to abbreviate your parameter names. Uh, type a little bit of it, and then hit tab. That'll bring out the entire parameter, and then you can kind of go from there. So it would be dash recurs, or dash exclude. I think it makes the command a lot easier to read, and then you don't have to worry about whether things are positional or not. As you become more experienced with the shell, and you kind of get used to it, and you can start abbreviating things to save yourself a little bit of time.